How's everyone going? Got some lovely stuff in that tummy of yours? Hopefully it doesn't make you sleep the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> Can I just say to everyone firstly that um, myself and Mary really love you guys. Hey? It's like um, we were just sitting down in our break just now, um, me just eating some fruit and and uh, just feeling how it's, it's starting to feel like family now. Isn't that, isn't that nice? And, and that's a very good sign. It's a very good sign that you can treat even people you don't really even know like family because that means love for each other is growing. And, and the other thing that we felt too was that was just admiring your desire and passion for truth even though for many of you there's quite strong emotions associated with all of that, right? And, uh, and we would just like to compliment you um, to, of having that seeking attitude towards truth. And uh, it also causes us to feel a lot of warmth and, and love for you because it's that seeking truth that actually has drawn us to, to you or drawn you to us because of, we both have this emotion within of wanting the truth no matter what and how painful it is and all those kind of things. So I'd just like to say to, say to you um, as an audience to th and thank you that uh, you're displaying that lovely attitude. Also, the warmth uh, among you is growing and it feels really quite good to experience that with you. And uh, so it feels like we've got now a family of a few hundred at least coming along here regularly. And and that feels really lovely. I don't know how that feels for you, but that feels really lovely for myself and Mary. So, yeah. Now let's get on to the subject of action. Action is the thing that most of us don't want to do, to be frank. Right? So let's look at what's going on at the soul level. But soul level, we've got this causal emotion, right? most of which we have got no idea what it's about. When we start, do we? Really got no idea. We think we know, but often we don't know. Then on top of the causal emotion, there's all this fear. So we've got a whole list of fear. A lot of those fears, we at the start, we don't even really know much about that either, what the fears are about and where they come from and how they enter this. And then on top of that fear, we generally have some kind of denial, which is usually the anger that's sitting on top and things like that. So we've got that sitting in there. But a lot of times we don't even know what we're angry about either. And then on top of that, we've often got some depression that's sitting in there, keeping a layer, a lid on all of that. And then off, on top of that, of course, we're now up to, sorry about the action went up there. We've now got this, uh, we've got this intellectual, where we're really into our intellectual denial of everything. UAL, isn't it? Denial of everything. So there we are, we've got this chain of stuff in there and we have got no idea what most of it is, to be frank. All right. Now, the only thing that really lets us know what it is, is what we've been telling you about, which is this law of attraction thing, right? The law of attraction is a law that God created specifically to help you begin to identify the emotions that are there within you that are unhealed but it's also there to demonstrate to you the emotions that have healed. It's actually a very, very good feedback system telling you everything about how you're going. This law of attraction. But the problem is for many of us, our law of attraction, because we're in so much intellectual denial of all of these other things, our law of attraction is also often heavily suppressed. In other words, we have constructed our life in such a manner to avoid our law of attraction pretty much on all occasions. Right. So you know what it's like, you, you're driving along the car, somebody cuts you off in the car, you, you slow down. All right. So you slow down and back off, so you just, you just got out of one of your fears and you just got out of one of your angers, right? just there and then generally. right? And we tell ourselves, just auto, we, we do these things automatically. We automatically adjust our life to suit our law of attraction because we don't want its results. And so... What happens in our family situations? In our family situations, generally what we do is we avoid the truth at most costs. At almost, at, and the cost generally is ourselves, but we avoid the truth. We don't tell, say the truth. We don't tell the truth. We don't want to hear the truth. We don't want to feel about the truth that we hear. 
And so what we do is we even avoid situations. And you've been there in those pregnant moments in the family, you know, where everybody's there, nobody's saying anything that's real, but nobody wants to op open the conversation up because if you do, it's going to be a bun fight, right? And so you don't want to deal with anything, so you stay in this place of complete suppression. Then we go along to work and we're not that happy with our work, we're unhappy with our work, but if we say we're unhappy with our work, then the boss might fire us and then I won't have a job and then I'll be, you know, then what will happen? I might lose my house, I might lose the mortgage, I might, you know, and before you know it, I might lose my family, might lose my wife even if that goes ahead. So we don't start that entire process of telling the truth either because we want to avoid, again, all of our law of attraction. So what do we do? We finish up doing this thing that many of us have done many, much of our life. Compromise. Right. Do you feel yourself doing that a fair bit in your life? Compromising? Okay, so, so the beauty of compromise is it makes the law of attraction events seem less big, less real, less important. The beauty of compromise is, it, is it's a way of getting away with it inside of ourselves. So we finish up compromising. Now, when we compromise, what we do is we avoid doing something else, and that is we avoid acting in harmony with truth. And this is why I want to talk to you about actions. Because if you choose to avoid actions that are harmonious with truth and love, you will be able to avoid a lot of your law of attraction events quite easily, but you will never get to be at one with God and you will also never get to heal most of your emotions. Right? So this is an internal choice that most of us make and that is to compromise the truth. So we compromise truth and one of the easiest ways to compromise truth is to not say it and not live it. So what we do is we, we just make out it didn't, we didn't hear that thing we just heard. So you know when AJ talked about, you remember some of these statements, I'll say some of these statements. I've said to you categorically that if you continue to eat meat, you will never become at one with God. Now I've said that to you categorically. That's not saying that I think you shouldn't eat meat. It's totally your choice as to whether you eat meat or not, right? God gave you free will and you're allowed to eat meat. It's up to you. And I'm still going to love you and God's still going to love you if you eat meat. Does that make sense? And the truth is, though, that you're never going to be at one with God if you eat meat. Why is that? Because eating meat is an, act, is an unloving act towards animals. And any expression of an unloving act is going to result in harm to your own soul. That's the truth. All I'm doing is telling you the truth. I'm not judging you and I'm also not saying to you you've got to not eat meat. I'm not telling you what you should do with your life. I'm just saying if you want a relationship with God that brings you to a point of atonement with God, then you will not be able to eat meat at some point in the future. Does that make sense? A uh, question if we can have... Right up. About three weeks after I started coming along to these seminars, mm -hmm. I decided to go vegetarian. Yep. I had been thinking about it for a long time, maybe a couple of years or something. And um, so I've actually been having dreams, not so much lately, but within the first couple of months about accidentally eating meat. Like I'll be eating a burger or something and then I'll take a bite and then I'll realise that there's meat on it. And then I think, oh no, you know, what have I done now? sort of thing and um, I've also been thinking um, I've had a few times where I'm just um, like the majority the majority of this last seven months I've been fine without eating meat but I think because I haven't actually um, released the emotions around the desire to want to eat meat mm -hmm. um, I've actually every so often I sort of feel like eating meat again yep so with the, like you've talked about um, erroneous desires and stuff so and how even just having the desire but not acting upon the desire can harm your soul. Will that harm my soul Well, now? The, the desire is in the soul. Yeah. So it can't harm the soul any more than it already is. Oh, okay. Because it's in you. 
Does that yeah. make sense? So a lot of times, like, we have these desires in our soul. Whether we recognize they're there or not, it's immaterial, they're there, and we need to know what they are eventually. Now, if we recognize there is a desire in my soul to eat meat, so, you know, I walked down the street today, who was down the Lullaby foreshore this morning? There was a, there was a, a surf life-saving thing going on anyway. And what happens is you walk past and there's all this cooking barbecue on the side, right? No, so, and I smelled, smelled it and I said to Mary, it's funny, you know, like I can smell that and, it's, and, and yet have no connection between that and having a desire for it sort of thing anymore. And, uh, but, but before I used to. So, so the fact is that as you progress through your emotions, these desires will eventually release from you. The key is to look at what's driving them. So rather than condemning the desire inside of us, we need to look at what's driving them. But perhaps we're getting a bit off my point. Because yeah. the point I'm trying to make with meat is I've said the truth to you about the subject. The truth is a person cannot become at one with God and continue to eat meat. That's the truth. Now, it doesn't matter, what, it doesn't matter how you feel about that. If you're angry with me for saying, well, that's up to you. If you feel controlled, well, that's up to you. If you feel like sad about it, well, that's, you know, they're all different emotions that we will feel perhaps with a statement like that. But it is a truth, what I'm saying to you, it is the truth. However, what we finish up doing is we finish up compromising the truth. So one thing you've done, Ivana, is not compromise the truth. So what you did is you've decided to not eat meat, even though you know there's a desire in you to eat it still sometimes, right? Yep. So that, that is better than not acting at all. Because there was a point that I raised in the first century and it's something I want to raise with you today, and that is if you know what to do that's harmonious with love and truth and you do not do it, it is a sin for you. That's how I said it in the first century. Now remember, sin means missing the mark of perfection in love, doesn't it? So it's not talking about being punished here. We're not talking about it's a sin for you and you're going to go to hell now because you don't... None of that, right? What we're saying instead is every, every time I do something that I know and I've heard and I actually feel inside of myself is actually wrong to do, but I choose to do it anyway, when I say wrong, in disharmony with love and truth, and I do it anyway, what am I doing? I am now in the state where I'm purposefully choosing to break the law of love. Can you see that? Now, that? now, that's a lot different than having a desire in you to break the law of love and not acting upon it. Does that make yeah. sense? There's two different states there. One is a purposeful choice. So you could say, here's my soul making a choice. Here's my soul making a choice. One of it is a purposeful choice, a choice to love is one side of it and the other side is a choice to fear. Right? In other words, a choice to stay in truth, a choice to stay in error, a choice. We're always making these choices, right? We are responsible for every single choice we make like this and in, in the course of any day. Now, if I know the truth is that I am being unloving to an animal if I eat animals, so if I know that truth, if I say I know that truth, and yet I still continue to put meat on my plate, have I yet felt that truth? Obviously not. Right? But if I still choose to make the choice, even though I've yet to feel the truth, and I still make the choice to be in fear, I still make the choice to be in error, then what's going to happen is that there is, there is an additional con uh, um, consequence on my soul for that choice. And in fact, the consequence is greater than what it would have been if I was in total ignorance. Can you see why? Because I'm hearing the truth, it's now hit me, I know it to be the truth that I'm hearing. So I'm not saying you don't know it yet, I'm saying inside of yourself you know it's the truth. Do you know that you're being unloving to an animal by eating it? Well, my suggestion is if you don't know, my suggestion is to go out with a knife and try to eat an animal like 
you know, go out to the sheep farm or whatever and try to slit the throat of your next victim. You don't like me saying these things, do you? <laughs> what I'm suggesting to you is, if you feel that eating your next leg of lamb is not an unloving act, my suggestion is instead of distancing yourself from the act and getting a butcher to slaughter it for you, to go out and actually do it yourself. So that you can at least connect with the emotional experience of doing that. And if you can still eat the leg of lamb after that, after that act, then, in my opinion, it obviously means that you're quite detuned <laughs> <laughs> from any emotion. But you, it's your choice, right? But uh, I certainly couldn't be detuned from that act. Now, that's not a condemnation of you. You're allowed to do anything you wish. You're allowed to eat meat. You're allowed to not eat meat. It's up to you. You've got, been given the gift of free will. But understand, and this is something we'll discuss when we have the law of free will, a discussion, Every time you break the free will of another being, every time you break the free will of another person, you are actually now not exercising your free will with love. And this whole discussion is about love. It's not about anything else other than love or truth. So my suggestion is to do what you have done, Ivana. Like if you know that eating meat is an unloving act, then don't choose to eat it anymore. That's what I mean by acting. Just stop eating it. And then you know how your body starts feeling a bit run down? You know, some of us say, oh, but if I stop eating meat, my body gets run down. Yeah, that's right. There's an emotional connection you have with eating meat. And you give it up and you'll find that this emotional connection is related to what your mum felt about eating meat or what your dad felt about eating meat. And there's all sorts of emotions that start coming up when you confront the issue emotionally. But you see, unless you act, you would never find those emotions, would you? And this is the point. If you know what to do that's harmonious with love and truth and you refuse to do it, then isn't that a worse condition than not knowing what to do? And we've got to look at why. Why am I in this rebellious state of refusing to do what I know to do is right? Now, that's just one issue with regard to eating meat that I brought up. It's an easy issue to pick on, right? I won't embarrass everybody by saying, put up your hands if you're still eating meat. <laughs> but let's go to another issue, smoking. Do you know, if you're a smoker still, do you know that smoking is an unloving act towards yourself? In other words, do you know that it hurts your body? Do you know that it hurts your lungs? Do you know that it's causing all sorts of damage to you, perhaps even causing some, some other problems in your system that finishes up resulting in cancers and so forth? Do you know that it's damaging to you? If you don't, then you keep doing it if you want. If you do know that it's damaging to you, but you keep smoking, then you're falling into this category of choosing to fear. Not just mm -hmm. doing the choice in ignorance. It's not an ignorance thing anymore. It's now a choice. And when you make choices to live in a state of error, emotion will never flow. So if you want to release causal emotion and get into a state of one with God and yet still stay in a choice to fear or a choice to, for, for um, anything to do that's disharmonious with love, what we're doing is choosing to stay away from God in the end. That's what we're doing. Now, you can choose that. I'm saying you're allowed to. You're allowed to choose that. That is your free will. All I'm saying is if you want to experience the benefits and blessings of being at one with God, then you're not going to be able to choose the things that are disharmonious with God's love at some point. And you can make that choice today or tomorrow or next week or next month or 500 years or 1,000 years from now. You're not going to all of a sudden die tomorrow just because you choose a certain thing unless, of course, the choice is very much disharmonious with love. Sometimes, like for instance, if you went to war, there is a chance that you might die tomorrow, I suppose. Many of our choices are a, lot less, are a lot more insidious than that in that it kills us slowly over a long period of time and yet are still does disharmonious with love. Now, every time I refuse to take action on this choice, I am actually refusing to deal with the underlying emotional reason 
why I'm making the choice to fear. Can you see that? So if I, if I choose, so I hear the truth, I hear the truth about the eating meat, for example. So I hear the truth. I go, oh yeah, that's an interesting idea. You know, who knows whether it's true or not, you know. And then I start experimenting with it a bit. So I go down the track of, oh, you know, how do I feel when I'm eating this meat? Oh, it feels pretty good, tastes pretty good, particularly if it's on a barbie, tastes real good. And so I, I start experimenting, no, that doesn't work. All right, let's go to the next step. Let's start uh, killing one of these things. So, let, so let's go to an abattoir and watch them do the process. All right, let's experiment with that as a feeling. How does that feel? Whoa, that's starting to feel a bit dark now, like. That, and if you've ever been to an abattoir, I don't know who has. What did you find? Was it pretty rough experience? Yeah, pretty rough experience, all right? All right, so I'm there going after visiting the abattoirs. I'm going, whoa, this is not feeling very good for me now. I'm starting to have some emotions here, all right? So now I'm starting to think, well, maybe this eating meat is not that good, you know? So I let that feeling gel with me. I don't have to make instant change. I'm just letting this feeling come. To me. And then eventually I get to the state where I know here, here, and I know that actually it's an unloving act. Now, from that moment on, if I choose to not do anything about it, there is actually more difficulties for my soul in the future on the issue. Because right? I am purposefully acting in disharmony with the law of love, knowing what I'm doing. Right. Wow, this is like... Sorry about that. It's just that it's, uh... Now, getting back to the discussion, if I know what to do and refuse to do it, then I am in disharmony with love and I am going to be causing a lot more difficulties for myself. Yeah. It's not that one? And the other one's with Karen. It's been off all the time. It's been off all the time, yeah. Honey, yeah. um, oh. you want to ask a question? You get, um, actually, I'll give you this one. I've got my new sound gear coming, but it's not here yet. I just wanted to ask um, how, the, how sugar relates to... Because I'm having a thing of avoiding and eating chocolate and sugar and then trying to process, even though I feel like I can get to my causal emotions, even if I do have chocolate, but there's still a desire and how that relates. Yep. Well, again, like, is it loving to have chocolate? <laughs> it's, not often <laughs> it's not often a question we ask ourselves. Um, Anything that helps you avoid your own emotions is obviously in an unloving act, no matter whether it's loving to actually have it or not. So, so if I really get pristine about this inside of my soul, I'll look at it, all right, anything that helps me avoid an emotion in this situation is helping me get away from God. So therefore, it's not a loving act to myself, whether, whether it's okay to have the thing or not. It's still not a loving act to myself. Does that make sense? So there'll be times when having chocolate is going to be a loving act to yourself, particularly if it's vegan chocolate, whatever. And then there'll be times where having chocolate is going to be an unloving act towards yourself because it depends on the meat reason why you're using it. Does that make sense? And, and, and the truth is if we act, we will finish up confronting the reasons why we use it. Mary, you want to? You've just been talking about um, some of the physical things like eating and not eating meat and that kind of thing. You're trying to hurry me up again. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Mary's waiting for me to get to the point. <laughs> I just wanted to add what had been powerful from my experience. Go on. But you're about far, to add Far it. away. No, go for it. No, no, you go away. <laughs> right. Go with it, darling. Uh, just that a lot of... Um, the more powerful issues around this taking action have been around emotional addictions yes. and emotion patterns within our relationship, for example, or relationships with my family. And when I've taken action that I know is feels really difficult, but I know that it's most in harmony with God's truth on the issue, a lot of my emotion has yep. uh, been exposed or, yep. and my blocks to the, that emotion, yeah. And the reason why I've been bringing up the physical things first is because a lot of the times we relate to the physical thing 
But then when we come to stepping into the emotional thing, we sort of lose track there. So what I want to do make, first is to make sure that you get the physical thing. When I'm choosing to do what I know to be an unloving act, I am going to automatically lock up my emotions. In fact, the reason why I'm choosing an unloving act, even when I know what's loving to do, is because I want to lock up my emotions. And that's the thing we need to understand. The reason why I'm prepared to compromise the truth is because I want to avoid the emotions that that will prevent. Does that make sense to everyone? That's why I do it. If I chose to just feel everything, I wouldn't choose to compromise the truth anymore because it, it would feel so bad within me that I couldn't. Now, can I just, before I ask another question, just... So the area of the physical area, which is the area that I've just talked about with regard to smoking or eating meat, you can, can you see the principle there? If I know what's disharmonious with love and I continue to do it, then I'm damaging my own soul further besides damaging other people, obviously, or other things on this planet. I'm also damaging my own soul further. Because that's a totally different state than a state of ignorance. A state of ignorance means I don't know what damage I'm causing. But now that I'm doing things disharmonious with love, I'm starting to understand I am causing damage, and yet I'm choosing to do it. And there's an emotional reason why I'm choosing to do it. Now let's go into the emotions on the, uh, on the emotional side. So on the emotional side, as Mary points out, there is often a whole list of addictions that cause me to compromise truth, right? And I want them. I want them because it helps me avoid my emotions, right? That's the way I get out of my emotions. If I can compromise the truth, if I can say the truth isn't real, if I can say that there's something wrong with it, that it's actually error, then it means I can avoid a whole series of emotions in the process. That's why I do it. As soon as I stop compromising truth, a heap of emotions are going to come up. What will I do with that? I don't want that a lot of the time, so what do I do? I just, yeah, <laughs> Choc <laughs> chocolate. I just finish up burying all of that under the compromise of truth. So I compromise the truth so I don't have to feel my emotion. Now, what I'm suggesting to you is that instead of doing that, you can do something different. So you don't have to, because you've got free will. You can do anything you like. You can wait a thousand years for your law of attraction to bring you the events that stop you compromising truth. Or you can choose right now to just draw a line in the sand, not for anyone else in your life, but for yourself. Where What you do is you draw a line in the sand, right? You draw a line in the sand. You imagine they're down there at the beach. Draw a line in the sand. I am not going to step over that line because that's my line of truth. You understand? Now, that means that whenever anybody wants you to compromise, you won't step over that line and just compromise. Because now what you're going to do is you're going to stay in harmony with truth. You've made that choice inside of you. Now, that is one of the most powerful choices you can make in your progression to God. Because actually, it's all your compromising of truth that causes you to disconnect from God. So when you stop compromising the truth in every single relationship, in every single thing you do, in every single interaction with every single person, with every single reaction, with every single thing on the planet, when you stop compromising the truth, now all of the emotional reasons why before you used to compromise the truth will be confronted. Guaranteed. It's the most powerful way to access your emotions, right? So many of us are saying, oh, I can't get into my emotion, I can't get into my emotion. And I've said to you many times, and many times as individuals, I've said, look at the area of truth. Some of you have come up and said, oh, I haven't been able to get into my emotions for 18 months now. And I'm saying, look at your area of truth. You do not want to tell the truth, live in truth, any of that. Yes, I do, you say. No, you don't. I know when you lied here, I know when you lied there, you didn't feel this then, you didn't feel that then. 
Like if you want me to give you a list of the times when I've noticed that you haven't lived in Charm and the Truth, that's okay too. But what often happens when I give the person a list of times where I can see they haven't acted in harmony with the truth of their own feelings, for example, they, they can get angry with me. And what does the anger prove? That they didn't want to live in truth. Does that make sense? So let's go back to this thing. We need to understand that if I want to stay, if I stay in truth and I act upon the truth that I know, I will always in the end experience the emotion, whatever that emotion is. Do you want to say something, Kerry? I just wanted to ask you specifically if I, you know, or anybody does act, um, does not act in truth, as you've said, what exactly is the damage? If I know, if, for, if I know that I'm going to do something that's out of harmony with love and I do that, how do I make it difficult for myself? How is it worse? Every single result of the consequence of your actions is put as a penalty upon your own soul. Does that make sense? Every single result. What does that penalty look like, feel like? Well, it depends what on what result? you do. It depends on what you do. If you chose to, for instance, deny the truth and deny acting in truth with your child, for example, in other words, you, let's say you know getting angry with your children is an unloving act, right? You know that. So every time you get angry with your child, you've broken that law, have you not? Right? Now, that has a direct consequence on your soul. Now, it depends on how you've acted angrily and what you did and how as to what the result is. But it will always have a direct result on your soul that you will need to deal with later on at some point. Will I feel it as greater pain, for example? Yes, definitely. Every soul penalty is pain. So you'll feel the guilt of the pain, the pressure of the pain, and you'll eventually feel the pain and release it. And it, it will hopefully. be amplified. And it will be amplified you will actually find your pain on the divine love path intensifies when you do this. See, this is why many of us get into pain and we don't understand. We're on the divine love path, our pain should be lessening. Hang on a sec here, a lot of times it's not lessening because we are not, we are compromising truth that we know to be true and there is an automatic thing going on in our soul where we feel more pain from that. Even our own conscience bothers us more, does it not? Like, so you're there eating away your meat, you can't do it very happily now, can you? It's like, uh, you know, like AJ's words are playing over your mind. Oh, you're saying, oh, you're not going to be, oh, you know, I'm never going to be, oh, no, useless, right? I'm bad, right? So that's not the way we need to go, but we do need to see that actually the feeling we're having is a direct consequence of our now knowing we're breaking the law of love. So remember, these are all just laws of love, and I know I'm breaking them. And the consequence will vary greatly depending on the choice. So if my choice is to go out with a machine gun and murder a few people because I'm upset, then obviously the consequence of that is very different to the consequences of just doing a minor thing that I may do, which might be tell a little white lie to my neighbour or something. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, thanks. But whatever the consequences are to that person will be the penalty on my soul. And when you think about that, that's... That's a pretty powerful thing to remember, isn't it? Yeah. To remember that. Can we come down to Napt? And then we'll come across here. Oh, sorry, babe. Um, over, over here to Lawling. And your mic's over there. It needs to be over there. <laughs> sorry about that. Um. AJ, uh, I had a situation just a few days ago where um, I was with my um, brother-in-law and sister and their family and it was at a um, restaurant and um, he, he has a need to be totally in control. Um, he reprimanded the children and they're all quiet except one child kept saying, well, what have I done? And as a result of that, he was sent out of the, the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And it kept going, and it's been going for days, and I have spoken to him before about, that I, don't, I don't think it's correct what he's doing. And I was sitting there at the table now, I was going, if I address this, um, it'll probably blow up my face. At the same time, I was really contemplating, I was saying, do you repeatedly say the same thing 
that's been said before and is not being heard and won't be heard, um, and you can tell by the anger that goes in with it. Um, and I, I just sat there thinking, do I put myself in that position? Um, there's other things behind it as well, but my question is, um, uh, how much did I compromise? <laughs> well, let's look at the, what you compromised. Yeah. Firstly, is a child able to protect itself? You mean the age is about 14? The age was 14? Yes. Is it able to protect itself very well at all towards the, the parent? Not, in, not from what I understand because he's got total control. Okay. So, so if the child was 25, it might be a bit different than if they're 14. Would that not be the case? Yeah. So what's the loving thing to do if somebody else, if somebody else is being harmed? What's the loving thing to do? Protect him. Well, not so much protect him, but to point out the harm, isn't it? It has been pointed out several times before mm -hmm. um, under less exposed conditions so that there was not in Sorry? a restaurant, not, not this and not that. Yep. But because I felt that it would be less like an explosion and more could be heard. So can you see what emotion inside of yourself you're avoiding? I was afraid, yes. You're afraid of what? Um, uh, causing a huge uh, an explosion that would be... From whom? Him, the father. A male? Yes. Okay. So can you see there must be some causal emotion in there for you? Yeah, my father, yeah. Yeah. And what you were actually avoiding was that emotion. Right. You weren't avoiding the confrontation, you were avoiding that emotion in okay. you. Okay. You see, yeah. in the end, you could sit there, say the truth, he could then get angry with you, project all this anger at you. Yeah. You don't have to say anything back. Yeah. You've said the truth. Now all you need to do is feel your own emotion. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. If you started saying something back and getting into an argument, now you're out of harmony with love. Right. Because you're then demonstrating you have an expectation that he changes his behaviour. Yeah. So the fact that there were his wife, my sister, and um, two other bigger boys, mm -hmm. that they were also being put down and quietened and don't talk, does that mean that the compensation that I have is fourfold now? Well, no. The truth is your soul condition is where you, is, is the truth, right? Yeah. So what's, what's this exposing firstly in your soul condition? I'm not sure of the question, but is it that I'm afraid? Is that what you're, you're saying? You're afraid of yeah. speaking the truth. Yes. Isn't that the truth? Yes. yes. <laughs> right? Yes. So you're afraid of speaking the truth because of? Confrontation. A male's anger. All oh, right. A male's rage. Yeah. So can you see the relationship? It was a male. Was all, so you've got to look at the entire thing. You're afraid of speaking the truth because of a male's rage. So the fact that I've spoken before doesn't mean because this is a different event. And so the question I'd have to ask, why did you go out to dinner with them? If you know that your brother is, and you've talked to him about it many times before, yes. and you know he's going to go and treat them all badly again, why are you associating with him still? Why aren't you saying to him, no, I can't sit there in a restaurant with you while you treat your family badly. Uh -huh. I'll catch you later. And then walk home. Which and is then get up and walk home. <laughs> which is way, way, way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And even if, it, if, for me, if it meant like getting a taxi home or walking home yeah. or whatever, I would. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because, because in the end, all you're doing by sitting there is tacitly approving. Yeah of unloving behaviour to yeah. other people. It would be different if he was doing it to himself. Yeah. But even then, you'd want to say something about it, wouldn't you, mm -hmm. if you loved? So, so my suggestion would be in that situation, all right, I've said this 25 times before, it's pointless talking again about it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So what do you do? You need to Take it. act. So the action isn't so much to repeat, it's to, to make a statement that I can't accept this I, anymore. What's your feeling inside of you when you were sitting there? What was the feeling inside uh, of really you? Really bad, yeah. Okay, you felt, why are you sitting in a place that yeah. feels really bad for you? Well, I must say that I ha I'm not removed from doing things that are in error myself. And no, that's okay. This is one area that you know the truth of. Yeah. Forget about all the ones you don't know the truth about. Look, this is what I'm saying here, right? There are some point, points where we know the truth. We're making a choice to fear or a choice to love. You made a choice to fear. Why? Yeah, and, and you're not being hypocritical because I've criticised my daughter at times and told her, not so much now, but I have done. It, it's not being hypocritical by saying, OK, I'm going to leave. Well, that's one of the emotional reasons why you compromise the truth. 
So one of the emotional reasons why is, oh, he's just going to say back to me, but you've done the same with your daughter. And what will you feel then? Shame, guilt. And you just want to avoid those emotions too, right? Yeah. Can you see that? Mm. So, so when I compromise the truth, most of the time it's because I'm avoiding lots of different emotions. Yeah. Yeah? And the key for me to understand is that if I stop compromising the truth, whatever the emotions are that I'm avoiding will automatically be exposed. Yeah. So in that situation, you had a number of different choices harmonious with love. Yeah. You could say again the truth, although from the past experience that hasn't worked very much either. Yeah. So the best thing to do would have been probably to act. But why didn't you want to act? You might have missed out on a meal. You might have then felt he would have been in a much more rage because you made a scene. You know what I mean? Like and all those kind of things. So you will feel those emotions when you act. So my suggestion would be in that situation, no, I can't deal with this anymore. I can't, like, you're treating your children badly again. And, and you know, this is what caused us damage when we were kids, you know. You're treating your children badly. I can't sit here and take it anymore. Are you going to keep doing it or do I have to leave? Um, What's the go? Would you call the act of, he, he's lent me money and I feel like I can't speak up too much. Is that like a prostitution of a form? Totally. Yeah, okay. Yep. So can you see there's emotional hooks into why yeah. you're not wanting to say the yeah. truth? And that's the thing to understand, you see. When we act, all of those emotional hooks would all be exposed. All the reasons why I don't want to act will all be exposed. That's the beauty of the action. Mm. The beauty of the action is it gets you closer to God very rapidly mm. when you act. So, so, and I don't mean you have to say the words again, because a lot of times saying the words is pointless. Many of you have come to me for emotional help and I've made the error of giving you the same words back 25 times in a row. Right? Many of you know that that's happened. Right? You know what in future I'll be doing? Is I'll be saying, yeah, I'll be saying, we've talked about this 25 times before. Now all I'm going to do is act. Right? Whatever it is on the issue. Right? I'm just going to act. Because actually the actions are going to confront my emotional reasons why I told you 25 times before instead of acting before. <laughs> and it will confront your emotional reasons why you have to come to me 25 times to get the same information. And you know, a lot of times we go over and over with the same thing. We come to a person 25 times because we don't like the answer. So we, come, we go to back to them wanting a different answer each time. Does that make sense? So we go along, they give us an answer, don't like that very much, it doesn't make much sense to me. And, and so we go off and then, then we go, oh, maybe he's changed his mind by now. You know, so we go <laughs> and we ask the question again. And, you know, honestly, if I'm in harmony with divine love, I'm not going to change my mind very much in some answers, right? Many of you have learnt that over time. So, so the key is to feel our emotional reasons why that's happening. Now, I need to feel my emotional reason why that happens. Well, what am I hooked into here? Why do I feel like I have to give the same answer 25 times in a row? Why don't I just say to the person, I've given you the answer 25 times before. You don't want to know the answer. Catch you later. And they deal with that emotion. Does that make sense? That is far more powerful in most cases than actually saying the answer again, to saying the words again. So when I say act, I'm not, I'm not talking about speak. I'm talking about act. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I want to act harmonious with love of myself and everyone else with harmonious with truth. I want to act, not speak anymore about it. Right? So this is what we find out. The trap we find ourselves into a lot is this. What happens is we're in our relationship with somebody and we say the words of what we feel is unloving. <laughs> And they say, yeah, no worries, I'm hearing you, rah, rah, rah. Next week, what happens? The same thing again. So we go up to them again. Actually, you did the same thing this time as you did a week ago. And, uh, you know, this is how I feel about that. Da, 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 da. And go away. And a week later, what happens? Same thing again. Now, why is this happening? It's not happening because it's happening because of two reasons. One is... I am refusing to act. What I want is I'm telling them the words so that they change. And that way I don't have to feel something. 
You know, if I can get you to change and you're attacking me, then you stop attacking me. I'm not dealing with why I'm being attacked. Agreed? You see, this is what we're of, often constantly doing. We're constantly trying to get the other people to change so I don't have to. But that's not going to help you become at one with God. Because to become at one with God, I've got to heal the emotions within me that is preventing my at one with God. Not, not the other person. They can do whatever they like. I need to heal the emotions within me. So I go and act. And what happens then? I'm now harmonious with love and truth. It doesn't matter what's happening with them. I'm now harmonious with love and truth. Who's closer to God now? I am. Now, I might not be yet at the emotion even, but I'm now closer to God straight away by my acting in harmony with love and truth. But the irony is the way God's designed your soul and the way God's designed the law of attraction and everything else, the law of cause and effect and the law of free will and all these other laws, is that whenever you act in harmony with love and truth, whatever the underlying causal emotion is for you will be exposed. And you'll start feeling it. And it's quite easy to feel because, like in that example you gave me, if you had just got up and said, I can't stay here anymore because this is very unloving, that's all you would have to say, right? I just can't. You could start walking out. Now, your brother might be really offended and cut off all of the reason, all of the money, the loan. You know, he said, might ask for it all back and he might do lots of different things because of those actions. But the only reason why you're choosing to not act is because of the fear of those emotions in you. Does that make sense? And so if I make the choice to fear, I am going to compromise the truth, I am going to not act, and as a result of not act, I'm not going to feel the emotion and I'm not going to get closer to God myself. So it's immaterial what the other person does. I am not going to. But the beauty of me doing the opposite, and that is making the choice to love, choosing to never compromise the truth, choosing to act on that, the fact of that I'm never going to compromise the truth anymore, now not only will my own emotions be confronted, but so will everyone else's around me. Automatically. They are all going to be confronted as well. So you think, is your brother better in a state where he's just in denial of his anger or feeling his anger? Which one's better? Feeling his anger is better than denial of it, isn't it? From a soul perspective. So if you look at it that way, actually, it's better for him if he does get angry than he just sits there all mommy and thinks he's all right. It's better for him. Uh, even if he's had a stroke, it's still better for him. Definitely. Even... <laughs> And especially if he's had a stroke. Okay. Do you understand why? Because the stroke is telling him all the problems that he's got in his own body that he's creating himself. And if he starts realising that, oh, maybe it's because of this anger that I feel, and maybe it's because of this other emotion I feel, and maybe it's because of this control that I have. And if he starts putting them together, he may change. Mm. He's not, like, how many of you, this is one, one, one big shutdown many of us have. Oh, it might hurt them. They might get sick if I do that. Right? And taking that to the extreme, they might have a heart attack if I tell them the truth. That's okay. They're allowed to have a heart attack if that's what they want to create in their life from you telling them the truth. They don't, you don't have to have a heart attack hearing the truth, do you? You could say, oh, isn't it wonderful? I've just heard the truth. You don't have to have a heart attack about it. If you choose to have a heart attack about it, it means there's a lot of unhealed emotion in you anyway, right? Well, it is an emotional blackmail. That's what I'm saying. And most of the time, this is what most people do. Most of the time, you go up and talk. They say, yeah, 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 no worries. You go away, nothing changes. You go up and talk again. They say, yeah, 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 go away, nothing changes. How many of you have had this in your relationships and in your life? Yeah, yeah, see, pretty much all. Like, so you go, you go there and this continues happening and, it, and the reason why it continues happening is both parties are unwilling to act in harmony with love and truth. Both parties. Even the party who thinks they're the offended party is unwilling to act in harmony with love and truth. Why? Because we're afraid. Because we're choosing to remain in fear rather than act. There's a lot of benefits in remaining in fear, Right? Seemingly, but one of them ain't being at one with God. You're not going to be at one with God ever in that state. But the benefits are, oh, I can prevent their anger. You know, if someone comes up and says, oh, do you think I look good in this dress? Uh, I can prevent their anger. 
Yeah, you look beautiful. You don't need to worry. Body, body's beautiful, right? Whatever. Easy way, isn't it, to prevent their anger. But if that's not what you feel, then all you're doing is compromising truth to prevent their anger, which means you're actually compromising your, the truth for your own sake. Can you see that? I'm compromising the truth because I don't want to feel one of my emotions. I don't want to feel what it feels like when that person's angry with me. I don't want to feel that. So I'm the person who's actually compromising truth because of my own desire to stay away from my own emotions. And this is why acting is so powerful. Graham, can we go up there? Oh, sorry, Natalie, you've missed out, have you? You're holding on to that mic, dear. <laughs> like, can, we, can we go with you then? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask, uh, you mentioned before about how you can eat meat and your soul, you don't enjoy it. And I thought about today, for example, I said, I, well, I think I feel that I've acted disharmonious with love. I said to my husband, if you go upstairs and get that for, if you don't go upstairs and get that for me, I'm not making you sushi. And straight away... I knew I'd said the wrong thing. I'd said something out of harmony with love. Yep. Now, you're talking about the penalty on the soul. I actually said to him, actually, I'll go and get it because what I just did was place an expectation on you and that wasn't fair. Yep. Can you correct it in the moment when you realise it or am I totally. still going to pay of the penalty? Of course you can. Okay. That's the beauty of all of your life. <laughs> if, and this is what we often do is we make the choice to fear, then we realise it and we go, oh, boy, that was pretty bad. You know, and we, and we, but we don't. We don't change our action. We so don't go back and reverse anyway. it, right? Okay. And I'm suggesting, yeah, go back and reverse it now. You know it's wrong. Do, fix it now. Don't wait. Okay. Fix it straight away. So I don't have to pay a penalty for that. Well, no. <laughs> Why would you? You fixed it straight yeah, away. Right. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Like, yes. uh, you know, so straight away you have an automatic. <laughs> And why are you worried about the penalties anyway? Your soul's already paying the penalties of all the things you've got unhealed. So just go with the emotion and release it, you know? That's okay. what we need to do. Thanks. Rather than being afraid of what penalty this may be, what penalty that may be, focus on allowing yourself to feel your emotion because that's the time when you're going to have the least penalties on your soul anyway. Does it make sense? Yeah. And you're not doing this because you're going to have penalties on your soul, are you? Aren't we doing this to become no. at one with God? Yes. Okay, okay. We've got to get the right, you know, it's like... A one minute with God, that's the reason why I'm doing this. Not Sorry. because I'm so afraid that, you know, like next week God's going to come down with a bolt of lightning and just destroy me. <laughs> Isn't it? That's what we're... And th see, the, you can see how a lot of the old religious programming affects our decisions. So when I say penalty, you go down this track of being afraid of the penalty. Your soul's already paying the penalties of every choice you've made. Already, right now, right at this instant. You, you know, the crinkle you got there. and the, That's all part of this penalty. So it's going on in your soul right now. Does that make sense? They're all there. They're all present. They're all there right now. The instant it happens is the instant the penalty occurs. So why worry about it? Just focus on lo loving actions, the choice to love, letting yourself not compromise the truth, and looking and, and automatically all of the emotions in you as to why you'd want to compromise the truth will just go Whoa, up. Wow, wow, I'm a bit afraid of women's singer there. <laughs> you know, what, let's say I start speaking the truth to the women, right? And I say the truth and bang, I get this barrage of anger. What would I normally do? Oh, I'd normally pander to her to get back you know, her nice, you know, just like I would have with mum maybe, you know. And instead I stop doing that. I say, no, no, I'm not going to do that because that would be unloving too. And I just feel this barrage of anger from a woman and I let myself feel what it feels like. Whoa. Just instead of defending it, and instead of going on the attack, instead of doing anything else, I just own it. That's pretty powerful now. Does that make sense? And um, behind. Um, talking about compromising truth, not compromising truth, mm -hmm. what about... Um, when your idea of truth is in error. Like, for example, um, a lot of people seem to think it's unloving to allow a child to experience the consequences of their actions. Yep. So, um, so a child does something what, we, what would be unloving and then it has some consequences of, the, of that action and then many of them say, oh, you should try to help the child not experience that consequence. Which actually, yeah, it's the opposite the thing that's unloving as to the example you've given. So, so, yes, you're right. What do I do? What do I do? Well, if, the irony is, if, it, is it, if I still act in harmony with what I believe to be the truth, 
ironically, my emotion is still going to get confronted. And it's very interesting, this, if you, if you follow through with it. If you experiment and follow what you believe to be the truth in the interaction, if what you believe to be the truth is not the truth, there will be another confronting moment that will soon expose that. You'll find a pattern, if you like, that eventually exposes that actually I'm the one in error, not the other person. So, for example, every time I have an expectation on another person, I'm in error. Agreed? So, so let's say I voice my expectation. So I'm, I'm in a partnership with my husband. I decide I'm never going to compromise the truth. So my husband goes and does something, you know. He goes out, gets a few beers, comes home, watches telly, watches the footy on telly, and I'm annoyed because I'm there vacuuming upstairs, right? So, so I come down. I'm upset, right? I come down. And I start telling him, I'm upset, right? And OK, OK, he said, I'm upset. That's interesting. Like, there's obviously an emotion in me either here, but I'm staying in my truth. I don't, I'm not aware of, I feel that he's the one who's doing the wrong thing, right? So what I do is I come down and I tell him, I feel you're doing the wrong thing. That's what I feel, isn't it? So say it to him. I feel you're doing the wrong thing. And he'll say, what do you mean, doing the wrong thing? You know, I've worked all week, whatever. You haven't, you've been out gallivanting around with your friends and off the argument goes and you can stay. And the, 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 you can see from the results that there is obviously emotion there between the two. And the emotion will get exposed even mm -hmm. if you started it off in error. Do you, does that, everyone follow me with that? You try it at home. So you, so you just need to be aware of the possibility that your idea of the truth could be wrong too? Yes, if I am humble, I will understand that it's possible that I am in error here. But I still need to honour the truth of my own emotional feelings. So if my feelings are, the other person is being unloving to me, right? I can go and voice that. And he might then say back, because he's now encouraged to be open and truthful, he might say back, but what about, I took out the rubbish here, I did this here, you never did that, I did this here, I, I mowed the lawn, you didn't do that, I did this and you didn't do that, I did this and you didn't do that, and now you want me to help you do your stuff. So he's now starting to point out some truth back to you, right? Now if both of us are humble, we'll both get to the fact that, yeah, we've got some emotions here, if both of us are humble. But even if one of us isn't, the other person will certainly get into some emotions as a result. And isn't this about triggering your emotions that are unhealed yet? Is that the Because in the end, you wouldn't be upstairs vacuum cleaning, feeling this emotion of rage towards your husband, right, if you were in a state of love, would you? <laughs> right, so, so you're vacuum cleaning, you're feeling these hatred emotions towards your husband, now, if you were in a state of love and you felt strongly that things weren't balanced here, wouldn't you just go and turn off the vacuum cleaner and let it get dirty? Because it's not bothering your husband that it's dirty. Is it? Because otherwise he'd be up there with the vacuum cleaner, wouldn't he? <laughs> Can you see that? So, so if I was in a state of love, I wouldn't be going around cleaning up other people's spaces. But then again, if like we're living in the same room and I'm vacuuming our bedroom, I'd be going, hang on a sec, this is our bedroom and he's expecting me to tidy it up all the time. So if I was in a state of love, I'd just turn off the vacuum cleaner, right, put it away, get all of my belongings out of my bedroom, <laughs> shift them into another bedroom. This is, this is what you'd do if you act. You'd shift them all into another bedroom. And when he comes upstairs and he says, What's happened here? You've, what's going on? You say, oh, I didn't want to clean our room anymore. So what I decided to do was have my room and I'm going to keep that tidy. <laughs> now, that's going to confront a few emotions, isn't it? <laughs> right? And because we've decided to act in harmony, not compromising love of him, not compromising, he's allowed to have his messy room, is he not? 
He's got free will. He's allowed to have a mess in his, in his environment if he wants. But the fact that I'm joining with him in his environment means that I've got to accept some of the common problems. Now, if I can't accept that because of my own love of self, then all I need to do is remove myself from that environment and put myself in a totally different environment, even if it's the next door room. Right? And whatever emotions come up, come up as a result of that. If I act, things will change very rapidly. But you know what we do instead of that? What we do is we go, down there, get upset, you know, you know, you didn't clean your you clean, you know, and then, and we really get upset, right? We get really worked up and, and, and then we have the big fight and argument, you know, with each other because he did this and he did that and you didn't do this and do that. And in the end, right, nothing gets resolved because that night we finish up sleeping in the same bed, albeit facing the opposite way, right? Because nothing's actually changed on the issue. The issue is a lack of love of self for me and I'm unwilling to act. That's my issue. It doesn't matter what his issue is. I feel that I need a clean environment. I'm allowed to have a clean environment, so I create a clean environment for myself. If he, does it, if he wants to join that environment, he's got to be as clean as I am. Does that make sense? Quite easy to enforce that, isn't it, if I've got a two-bedroom house or more? <laughs> Assuming I've got a two-bedroom house or more. And, and by the way, you could even choose to leave the home just on that one issue. Why wouldn't you? Isn't it a love of self issue? Why are we unwilling, why are we willing to compromise the truth about love of self? Isn't that a big emotional issue to work our way through? So, so if I'm willing to compromise by staying there, and I say, oh, I've got to stay here because of the money situation, now what I'm doing is I'm prostituting myself for money, compromising myself for money. I'm doing all these other things, right? And what I need to do instead of that is just act and every one of the emotional reasons why he's being unloving to you, why you're being unloving to him will all be just be triggered automatically. Can you see? If we act. So even if we act in a manner that we think is the truth at the time but later on we discover is an error, there is still going to be emotions confronted in that process. Always. Yep. It's when I deny my emotional truth that I cannot ever access any emotion. So if I go into state as, oh, I'm not really angry with her, or oh, I'm not really upset with him, or, oh, you know, I'll keep vacuuming, you know, he does other things, you know, and I'm not feeling my feelings, now there's no chance of me dealing with this emotion. Does that make sense? Because I'm now just detuning from the emotion completely. And that's the beauty of acting in harmony with what you feel to be the truth, even though in the end it might turn out to be an error. And if I'm humble enough, I'll accept when I, I was in error as well in that process. AJ, I had an incident like that the other day with my husband where um, we usually both get up with the kids and get them ready. Yep. And my husband had a late night of his choosing. Yeah. And so um, I let him sleep in and I started getting breakfast for the kids and the lunches and cleaning up and doing all these sort of things and he's still in bed. And I thought, I'm going to be late. You know, I'm running late because I've got double the load. And anyway, he got up and he sits down with one of the kids. The kids run over and give him a big hug and, and, and then <laughs> yep. he sits down on the couch and starts reading him a story. And I'm seething by yeah. this time. Yeah. <laughs> and so anyway, the kids went and got dressed and did what they, what they do. And I, I said to him, I said, look, I, I'm having trouble with this. I said, I know that I've got an emotion here. I said, but I feel that I need to say something to you because la, 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 la. And I just told him the story. Yeah. And, um, and he just looks at me and goes... All right. Okay. Hmm. So I walked off and thought, well, I'm going to deal with my stuff. And it was all my childhood stuff about not being able to have fun and having to get the work done first and all that sort of thing. And so and I'm somebody in this else getting the love. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And so then I was doing all this in the shower. So then he comes in afterwards after I'd finished my shower and he said, um, so have you worked through your emotional stuff about it? And I Whoa. went, yeah. <laughs> that brought up some more emotions. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. he knew I was going to because I said, you know, I know I've got emotions about this. Yeah. Um, and he said, because it didn't bring up anything in me. Of course. Well, I said, but even when I said something to you, and he said, no, nah, this is your issue. And so <laughs> I said, yeah, it is. But my question is, I was quite happy to work through all of my emotional side of it. But did I need to say something to him? Is that him? truthful? Oh. Um. 
obviously not <laughs> ask okay. that question. So let's not say that, eh? <laughs> but go on. What I was going to ask you was, yeah. it triggered me yep. even more to say something to him. Like, I knew that I had an emotion about it because I knew it was my stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but to say something to him triggered me even more. So do I have to say something to work through my own emotion or can I just go off and have my shower and work through my own emotion? I feel in a relationship, yes. Um, you, you have a lovely opportunity to work through, both of you work through emotions. And so when you say something, it's very powerful for the both of you. So myself and Mary talk all the time about stuff that's going on and, and how we feel. But can I just bring up the issue of what's going on? Like, yeah, please. When the other person doesn't admit their error, right, the truth is he is allowed to sleep in. If he never had how many children? Two. Two, two. to care for. But the fact is he has two children to care for, does he not? Yeah. Of whom he, of which he is half responsible, at least, for. Does that make sense? Yeah. So he is actually being unloving, expecting you to take the entire care of those children. I'm going to sound like I'm justifying now, but he, he allows me to sleep in sometimes. Well, yes, I know. And then you're being unloving for the same reason. Okay. <laughs> okay. Does it, can you see how we just compromise? Yeah, yeah. Right? The truth is now, if I made an arrangement with my partner, you sleep in tomorrow, I'll sleep in the next day, you sleep in the next day, I sleep in the next day, now we've got a workable arrangement that's based on love. We're both allowed to do what we want, but we're both caring for our children. Does that make sense? Yeah. But if one, one's making a choice that harms the other, then they are not living in the love with regard to free will. So if I make a choice that harms you... So, so if we're in a relationship and I make a choice that harms you by demanding more of your time to give to our children that we have both created, then I am out of harmony with love, no matter how much I think it's okay for me. Okay. And the truth is, a lot of the times, we do think it is okay when we're out of harmony with love, but, and it takes somebody else to feel that this isn't harmonious with love before we'll start to address the issue. So what do you do with that? He's not seeing that that's the truth. Now, he may if you say that to him, of course. But at the moment, let's say he's not seeing the truth of that. So what do you do now? Now, it, would be an act of un it wouldn't be a loving act to then sleep in the next day, right, and not tell him about it, because that would be an act of vengeance, wouldn't yeah. it? Which yeah. is not love either. I thought about it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. And many of us do, do we not? Like think about, all right, you don't know what it's like on my end, so I'm going to make you know what it's like on my end, right? And that's not an act of love either. What would be an act of love is to speak openly about the fact that, hang on a sec, we've both got responsibility for two children here. Whenever you choose to do something without informing me or making an arrangement with me that's regarding these children, then, then we are out of harmony with love in this relationship and you're out of harmony with love in terms of your responsibilities. Right? And what are we going to do about that? What are we going to do about that? You know, just wait for the answers. Mm. Because in the end, if you want to treat me unlovingly like that, in the end I'm not going to be very impressed. Right? And I'll deal with my emotion about that, but you know what I'm going to do in the end? If I'm going to have to have full responsibility of two children all the time, then probably what I'm going to have to do is just take, my two, take the two children, which you think are mine, and live my life like that, if that's what's needed. Right? Yeah. In the end though, most of the time when we confront the issue with love and truth, most people respond. Because most people in the end, particularly many of you you've already attracted, have a desire to live in harmony with love and truth. But that's not always the case. So was I not having an expectation of him though? Certainly you were. Yeah. yeah and that's what created your anger. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah. the truth that you even you, know, you felt angry on a number of occasions that I could feel in that particular dis like yeah. the first <laughs> instance of him sleeping, then when he got up and got the love, yeah, there was quite a bit of upset there for you. And then when he told you that it's your issue, there was quite a lot there for you there again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then when you're mm. on the shower and he come up, have you dealt with it yet? Yeah. Another, another <laughs> anger-based issue for you there. You see, so there was quite a lot of anger-based issues related to this experience for yourself, which actually covers over the underlying. Grief. But what's the grief you feel? What's the grief? Well, the grief that I totally missed, which you pointed out, was the not being loved. Um, but the other ones were about, you know, not being able to play and 
you know, you've got to do your jobs first and... Yeah. But, yeah, love, love. But the deepest one was you don't feel like you're being loved by your husband when he does this. No. And if there's no love there, then what, do you, what are you going to do about that? Yeah. Because you need to act. Can I just say a couple of months ago I listened to your um, Qualities of Divine Truth. Yeah, yeah. And, and you said, if you don't know the truth, if you know the truth, why aren't you saying it? And then and the crowd went quiet and then you said it again. I'll say it again. Yeah. And I went, oh, shit. <laughs> and it was just this big wave of, oh, my God, this is a truth. Yeah. And so I decided, which I don't recommend, but I decided to tell everybody in my life the truth within about two or three days. Why don't you recommend it? Oh, because I felt like I was so overwhelmed with with the emotion of it all. It's just like bang, 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 And that's bang, wonderful. Bang, bang, you, bang. Your soul needs to be overwhelmed to expand. Oh, well, right. <laughs> well, now I can look back yep. and I'm still working through a lot of the, you know, Results. causal emotion, but yep. I can look back and just go, oh, I'm so glad I did that. And you'd be proud of yourself, would you not? Oh, the that's what it was. When you said that statement, I just went, I'm going to muster the courage here for whatever emotion that comes up. Yep. And there was so much. Rejection, anger, betrayal, abandonment, yeah. not being loved. Uh, dying alone, all you know, everything just came up at once, and yeah. it was just like I said, overwhelming. And I felt like I had no support around me. Yep. Um, but now I look back and go, that was that was cool. That's right. Yeah, because now you've got through all of those emotional experiences, you've released a lot of that emotion, and you can look back and see the power of the truth. But also, the beauty of not compromising truth is we end up with having some pride in ourselves. Mm -hmm. We end up having some feeling of worth. Wow, like I was courageous there and look, you know, look at, uh, look at the results inside of me, not, not anyone else, but inside of me as a result of this courage. I managed to release quite a lot of emotions through this courage that I had. One of the biggest things was the loss of, you know, the fear of losing everybody. My husband, my, like I've lost my best friend, I've lost a couple of other friends and, you know, I, I could lose my husband still, I could lose my kids, but I'm not afraid of that anymore. Yes. It, it will hurt. Yeah. If it happens, but I'm not afraid anymore. And but you'll be able to feel the hurt rather than avoiding it. Yeah. yeah. It's and just the beauty of that is that then many of these events that we were afraid of before finish up never happening mm -hmm. anyway because our law of attraction has been released from us. The causal emotion, which is this deep fear that we'll be alone, has gone, you mm -hmm. see. And most of the time we're afraid of speaking truth because of the potential grief. That's the main reason. We're, we're afraid of what's going to happen when I say, yes, I did that. But that. Like, honestly, what I've had from many people, like this is, many people have come up to me. I remember one of my first interactions with, uh, you don't mind me talking a bit about Katerina? Um, one of my first interactions with Katerina when we were in Greece was, she came up to me and said, does that mean I have to tell my husband everything? And I said, Yes, Katerina, you need to tell your husband everything. She just goes, jeez. <laughs> and then, just the thought of telling her husband everything, for the next two hours she went down in a room and cried rather than saying at the group. Just the thought of telling her husband everything caused lots of emotions to flow. Does that make sense? Like, and the this is the beauty of truth, is that truth opens you emotionally. Right? And then if you're willing to act upon the truth, you're going to just be open so much emotionally, you'll be surprised. You'll get to a point where you think, wow, like, I'm, like before I was stuck. Now I'm not stuck. <laughs> I'm now processing this emotion, that emotion, this emotion, that emotion, because now I'm speaking the truth all the time. And I'm not going to remain stuck while I'm in that place. Honestly, you can't remain stuck in that place. God designed your soul to love truth. God designed your soul that everything in it operates around the truth. It, it, it all physically operates around the truth. That's the beauty of this. It physically operates in a manner that's only harmonious. When you're harmonious with truth, everything operates perfectly. That's the beauty of your soul. It's an amazing creation when you think about it, isn't it? That the only time my soul is going to work properly is if when I'm totally harmonious with truth. And after a while, you get that. You get that here inside of yourself. So instead of going, oh, you know, I'm so afraid of telling the truth. I can't tell the truth. You know, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. You know, how we go. We, you know, pulling our hair out. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? As soon as we act, 
all of those emotions are going to be removed from us through this process of exposure and we'll just feel in harmony with truth. Now that may happen over, it's got to happen over time obviously because there's truths about all different subjects. Does that make sense? So it's very hard to go and say, all right, let's list all the things I know are true and now go and deal with them. Well, you, there's all these things you know are true, but then there's all these things you don't know are true yet that you find out are true after you've released certain emotions. And then you'll have to go and deal with the truth of them as well. And then the truth of them that they expose, and then the truth of that that they expose, and so forth. And once you get through that process, you'll find that you'll feel very free to speak the truth. So, you know, when you come up to me and, and, do it, and, and I say, oh, do you realise you're sexually projecting at me at the moment? I'm not embarrassed at all anymore about saying that. You know? I used to be. I'd go, whoa, and, 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 I, and I'd go, oh, you know, stay away from that person, you know. Like, and all I'm doing is staying away from my own emotion of not having to say the truth. Can you see that? This is the investment we have, you see. The investment is, if I compromise the truth, I'm just staying away from my own emotion. If I stop acting in harmony with truth, all I'm doing is avoiding my own emotion. And let's look at it from a deeper perspective. I'm avoiding my own relationship with God. I'm avoiding my own potentiality of bliss. That's what I'm doing. I'm choosing to stay away from bliss in that place when I avoid the action. So what's going to happen from now on, and many of you have begun experiencing this last week, is I've decided personally that what I'm going to do is I'm not going to say things more than once anymore to individuals. So when a person comes up and says, oh, AJ, I'm stuck. And I'll say, what was our last conversation when you asked me when you were stuck? Can you remember what I said? And if they say no, then I'll say, no worries, you need to go away and try to remember. <laughs> I, I don't want to keep saying the same thing over and over again. That's just a waste of my time and yours, isn't it? What we need to do instead is be really focused, all right? Do I really want to know the truth inside of me? Do I really want to know? I am perfectly happy to say, and everyone here should be perfectly happy to say, if we're learning the divine love path and we want to be on the path, we would need to learn to live in truth, which means being perfectly happy to say the truth. Right? And I need to say the truth, you need to say the truth, and if the truth is that, hang on a sec, we've talked about this five times before, what's going on? What's going on is one of us is avoiding something here. Or both of us. And in my case, what I've found I've been avoiding is this, this issue of wanting to help people, wanting to help people, wanting to help people, feeling like giving out the truth, giving out the truth, giving out the truth. And in the end, I didn't want to look at my own addiction to just saying the truth rather than acting. You see, when you act, everyone judges you, don't they? Like last week I had that happen quite a lot where I acted and all of a sudden I get judgment of this wasn't fair, that wasn't fair, this wasn't fair, that wasn't fair, right? All of a sudden I acted and lots of judgment of this wasn't fair. And when, what I've said to a, 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 quite a number now is, all right, let me ask you this question. Does God ever tell you why God is not, why you are not receiving divine love? Does God get in here and say, AJ, uh, the reason why you're not receiving the love, <laughs> receiving divine love in this particular instance is because. Da -da -da -da. Now, is God capable of doing that with you? If God designed your ear, is not God, God able to tell that ear what's really going on? So, why doesn't God do that? No, the reason why God doesn't do it is because God always acts. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? You see, you see, the reason why God doesn't tell you is because the instant you're in a certain state, God has acted already. Right? So, so God doesn't say you're not receiving divine love cause. You're just not receiving divine love. God's already told you something's wrong. Do you want to know it? If you wanted to know it, you'd ask God why, wouldn't you? And God, through your law of attraction, is probably already showing you why. That's the irony. God's already saying, this is the reason why, that's the reason why, this is the reason why, that's the reason why. 
And if you deal with one of these, you'll receive some more love because at the moment you're blocking this love. Like, that's what God's already saying. That's why God doesn't say it in our ear because God already acted. Uh, so God doesn't need to say. And when I was thinking about that, I've been pondering about this issue for some time, right? And I see, and I see God always acts and never says why she acted. This is an interesting thing, isn't it? See, quite often we have a demand on other people. Why did you do that? Like, you know, they're no longer seeing us anymore. Why did you choose to do that? You should have told me. Why should they tell you? If there's something wrong, why should they even tell you? Why can't they just act? Doesn't God just act? Of course God just acts. That's the beauty of God is everything is instant because God acts instead of talks. Do we get that? Like this is how God treats us. God is, in, is not God in the place of the most love. So if God is in the place of the most love, see, I hear often, often from people this statement, oh, but you would tell your child before you take away their clothes. Why? If their child is ruining their clothes, then obviously they don't appreciate the gift of the clothes, so you can just take them away without telling the child. And when the child comes and asks you, why did you take away my clothes, mummy? That was my favourite thing or whatever. Oh, because I acted. <laughs> because I'm tired of saying why. <laughs> I'm just acting now. And the beauty is every time you act in this manner, the instant you act, the emotion will be exposed in yourself and them. Right? So quite often I've said to parents, for example, there's grown children living in their home, strewing their clothes all around the place, right? Leaving them all around the place, and the parent goes up to them every single time and says, Can you please put your clothes away? And usually they say it in an even worse state than that, right? Where they're angry. Can you please put your clothes away? I'm sick of. <laughs> right? And off they go, right? Why do they need to do that? Because they're unwilling to act. The parents are unwilling to just go around and pick up all those clothes and take them down to the op shop. <laughs> That's the act. And what would happen then? Well, what would happen then was the kids would come home, the grown children, where's my coat, Mum? <laughs> well, to be frank with you, what I did was I picked it up and I put it, took it down the op shop. <laughs> Why did you do that? Well, you know, usually you would get a lot more anger than that, right? Which is one of the reasons why you avoided the act in the first place, right? So you get some anger. Why did you do that? Well, because I'm tired of telling you the same thing over and over again, and that is that it's unloving to me to have to clean up after you. And this is my home, not yours. So I'm allowed to do what I like in my own home. If that means tidying up your gear and selling it to somebody who actually wants it and who's willing to look after it instead of strewing it all around my house then that's what I'm going to do. Now, don't you think that child's going to think again before they leave their new <laughs> jeans hanging? Of course they are, because the parent has acted instead of just said the words over and over again all the time. You see, this is how God treats you. God treats you the same way as this. God automatically, there's any time you act disharmonious with love, automatic consequence. Every time you act harmonious with love, automatic consequence. There's beautiful consequences when you act automatically in harmony with love. Amazing consequences. Your whole life is just like smooth as. And I've had times when I'm going along in my life and it's smooth as and then all of a sudden it's, whoa, like this is not smooth. Something's going wrong, right? Because, and something's going wrong. Yes, what's going wrong is I've got some emotion inside of me that needs to be released and once I release it, then it will go smooth. I had a situation last week, like, you know how it's been with electronics gear for me lately, like, it's just been pretty bad, right? And, and last week was very interesting because I ordered all this uh, equipment, a month or two ago now, I ordered all this equipment. I got, I received the equipment, I received a third of the equipment that had been promised to me to be sent, I'd been charged extra for it, and then on top of that, the wrong stuff was supplied. I'm going, well, things are normally smooth here, so what's going on? 
And then I realised I was just so afraid to address this issue with the people who were suppliers. And on top of that, I realised I was so afraid to act, not just speak the words, not just ring up and say, oh, it was the wrong stuff. And this is what I did the first week. I rang up and said, oh, it's the wrong stuff. And they said, oh, sorry about that. Oh, yeah, we made a mistake. Sorry about that. We'll credit your account. We'll do this. We'll do that. And off they went. And then... You know, then a week later I haven't heard from them, I ring them up again, what's going on with my stuff? Oh, that's right, yeah, we forgot about that. And this went on for three and a half weeks like that. Right? So I'm wanting all this equipment that people had donated some funds to buy and, 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 and yet we're not getting it. And I'm going, what's going on with my law of attraction here? It's just weird, right? Ah, what it was in the end was this. I was afraid to act. To just say, I'm sorry, but I'm cancelling this entire order and I want all my money back. The irony was, the next, as soon as I realised that, as Mary knows, I went to the phone, rang them up, said, I'm cancelling this order. Why? Because your service is actually quite terrible. Um, so I told them the truth, your service is actually quite terrible. I gave you this money up front, you've been sitting on it now for a month, nothing's happened, you have no, it feels to me you have no desire to change it and that's okay with me, so I'm cancelling my order. Like, you're allowed to do what you're doing, I'm allowed to cancel this order. They go, oh, okay. And, you know, a bit of projection of anger from them, not very much. Anyway, I hang up the phone, I look on the net, and why and beside, there's this other place that I can buy this stuff from that I'd already seen before, but I didn't buy it from the first time. And so I ring them up. Now, he is totally different. He's like bending over backwards, whatever I need, email, 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 email back, there's all this list, beautiful, got it ordered, all ordered, done. Right, now he's building it right as we speak because the order was only processed yesterday. But what I learned from all of that is that this was all just to teach me that I start, need to start acting instead of speaking. That was the lesson for me that I needed to start acting upon the truth that I know to be the truth instead of just speaking and trying to make it change all the time. I've got to look at my own emotional investment in not acting. Does that make sense to everyone? I have an emotional reason why I don't want to act in harmony with truth. Why I have to speak the words rather than doing the action itself. Right? So... There's, there's been many areas in my life this week that I've addressed with regard to that. Some of you have felt the consequence of that <laughs> in the sense that I'm no longer going to act anymore in a word, just the words, speak the words, without there being some action. And I've decided that's the way my, I'm going to live now. Because I've not compromised truth very much in the past, but I have compromised action all the time. You know how you speak the words to somebody, nothing happens in return, so you go back and you speak the words again. Nothing happens in return, so you speak the words again. And then you go, oh, but I just need to be patient. And Hang on a sec, does this God do this? Now God's patient, but is this patience? Me speaking the words again, is this patience? No, this is not patience. Patience is I speak the words once, nothing happens, so I act, and then I have the patience and the love for the person that later on down the track when they realise what they're doing, now I'm perfectly feeling love towards them and I'm not feeling resentment or upset or anger because I've spoken 25 times in a row. Does that make sense? You think about how that happens in your own life and you'll realise that most of the time we get angry because there are no results from our words. And the reason why there are no results from our words is because we use our words to avoid action. Right. Um, Hello AJ. Uh, re regarding action, for me sometimes I feel I've done this so many times in my life where I just want to run away from a situation. Yep. So I feel action can be good when you say instead of speaking, just act on, on the truth. But sometimes what I do is I feel I should go away because I cannot stand to feel this way. So I know that's 
Yeah, I'm just in to total denial. That's an avoidance, yeah. I'm I, not suggesting that. Yeah, which I understand, but sometimes then I don't know what to do. Last week, I had this feeling I want my own space because I was sharing a room with one of my flatmates. And I had this feeling all my life I've been sharing a room and I knew that was connected to my childhood where, you know, I didn't have my own space and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But then I had this feeling, I'm going to run away right now. And then I was like, that's not, I shouldn't do that. You don't need so to I do that. So I stayed in the situation yep. and, I, and, I, and I felt so many things and I've got my own space and I'm really happy. But sometimes, which I'm really happy, I've done all of these. But what I mean is, for me, it's really difficult to know sometimes if action is good or not. You know, it's kind of... That's the secret. Am I, am I fearing in my action or not? If there's fear in my action, then obviously the action... When I say fear in the action, if I'm running away, it's because I'm afraid, is it not? So why would I run? I would if firstly want to deal with my fear, and then I work out, do I want to walk away? <laughs> Or not? Yeah, but for example, like in every day's action, you're sharing the room with your husband. You don't want to clean, so you go in another room. If that's not uh, moving because you don't want to feel you have to clean, so you're no, going no, away. No. So that Remember I said in the situation I gave, you're sharing a room with your husband and he doesn't want to clean the room. You have to clean it all the time. Is it your room? Whose room is it? Isn't it both like of your both. room? Yeah. So aren't both now responsible for their space? Now, if one of you is taking full responsibility for the space, then that's out of harmony with love, is it not? Mm. So my action would have to be bring that in harmony with love. It's not harmonious to love to force him to clean his room, is it? Mm. And it's not harmonious with love and myself to clean his room for him, is it? What's well, the only alternative? So you don't avoid the feeling of you need to clean for someone. You blah, blah, blah. No, I feel all those feelings. Feel all those feelings. And then I act at the but same But you time. still need to act harmonious with love. Remember this action is about harmony with love and truth. Act in harmony with love and truth, what you know to be loving and truthful. For example, in the situation you gave, you were afraid and you wanted to run. Is that harmonious with love and truth? No? So I would stay. That would be my action. Yeah. Does that make sense? So if you look, ask yourself the question, is my potential action harmonious with love or truth? If it's not, then do the opposite. If it is, then do what's harmonious with love and truth. So in the example you gave to me, you actually did the harmonious thing with love and truth by staying. You dealt with the emotion and ironically then attracted a whole different set of circumstances. And that's the result of staying in harmony with love and truth. You finish up attracting it automatically. Mm. So I'm not suggesting that you act in a disharmonious with love and truth manner. What I'm suggesting is you act harmoniously with love and truth. So either way, it's not a secret of when you want to act, just ask yourself the question why you want to act. If that feels okay or if that feels like, oh, hold on, maybe I want to do this, but because I don't want to feel something. Yep, that's fear. So you know straight away, if I don't want to feel something, now I'm afraid, therefore I'm not acting in harmony with love. If I want to feel something, then that now I'm in the state of love. So, so in the case of me vacuuming my partner's room, right? I can be vacuuming the partner's room and not feeling a single thing, can't I? But if I'm feeling something in that interaction, I'm feeling anger with my partner because my partner's not here vacuuming the room. And when I think about it, the last 10 years I've been vacuuming this room and he hasn't done any of it. Now I'm starting to connect with some emotion, so I need to feel my way through this emotion, but I also need to act harmonious with love and truth. What's the loving and truthful thing to do? Firstly, tell him. So, well, you don't necessarily have to, though, but, but you could choose to tell him. So I act in harmony with love and truth. The first thing is I need to stop vacuuming because <laughs> I'm not loving myself while I'm doing it and I'm angry. So I would put down the vacuum cleaner, turn it off, sit down on the bed instead. Now what do I feel? All right, now I'm starting to feel some of my emotions and part of the, one of the emotions I feel is, wow, this isn't fair. So what is fair? So I'd ask myself, what is fair? What is fair to myself and to them? What's fair to myself and them is we both care for this space. This is both our space, it's both, both of us need to care for it. That's what's fair. So if he hasn't cared for it for 10 years and you've talked to him about it before, why, why wouldn't you not act? And even if you haven't talked to him about it before, 
God never talks to you about it before, but acts. So you could, in that particular instance, just move your gear out to the next room. Right? He says, if you move his out, that wouldn't be loving, would it? Why wouldn't it be loving if you move his out? Does he want to, he's happy with this room. Is he not? He's happy with it being a mess and sometimes having clothes on the floor and everything. All the things you're not happy with, right? He's happy with, otherwise you'd change. He's happy with you even cleaning it. <laughs> he's happy with all those things. If I then move his gear out, I'm just acting out of anger now. Um, no. Can you see what I'm saying, though? You know? Thank you. Like, for example, my, cho my choice to love or a choice to fear, would that be a choice to love? If I was loving to my partner and I was doing the vacuuming, I'm the one angry, I'm the one doing the vacuuming. He's not angry, he's not doing the vacuuming. I'm the one who's angry, I'm doing the vacuuming. Is it a loving act now for me to kick all of his gear out of this room? Whose room is it again? It's not his room, it is our room. So therefore, if I then grab his gear and throw it out, because of my anger, am I acting harmonious with truth and love? No. So if I'm not acting harmonious with truth and love, is there going to be any positive benefit from this for me? Probably not. However, if I then say, am I allowed to have control over my gear in this room? Yes. Am I allowed to use my free will with my gear? Yes. Am I acting harmonious with love of myself by not being in this space? Yes, because it's not loving for me to be in a space that's dirty if I feel like a feeling of wanting to be clean. So I'm perfectly able to move my gear out into another room and still stay harmonious with love. So supposing the only space... Let's, uh, let's get the mic down if you're going to... Mary's coming with it. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> One of you. <laughs> So supposing the only other space is something like a garage, you then know, where there's nowhere nice for me to then put move my into stuff. the garage. I would get probably a bit pissed and have to deal with some emotions around that as well. Exactly. That's your emotion. You need to own that because that's not his fault. That's your choice. You're making a choice to move out of this space because of love of yourself. So choose a space where you're moving into that's also loving to yourself. Right? Because in the end of the day, if, if, if there's no other space, I'd go to a motel unit. Unpack my clothes and whatever, whatever. Like, and if I haven't got the money for a motel unit, I'd get my tent out of my backyard and go and put my tent in the backyard and say, that's where I am. And if, there's no mo if I don't have a tent in the backyard, I'd ring up somebody and say, have you got a spare room that I can come and visit for a while? I would create a solution that's still harmonious with love of myself and harmonious with love of himself, of him. Right? Why wouldn't you do that? The only reason why we wouldn't do that is because I'm afraid of acting, because I want to compromise my own emotional experience. What I, the only reason why I don't act in the end is because I am afraid of my own emotions about the action. Or of, it, or of experiencing discomfort, maybe, something like that, yeah. If you speak into the mic. So everyone or I'm can... afraid of experiencing certain discomforts and Totally, that. but that's still me being afraid of my emotion, yep. is it not? Yep. Yep. Right? So in the end, the only reason why I will refuse to act is because I am afraid of living in the truth because I don't want to feel one of my own emotions. That's the only reason why I wouldn't act. So what I looked at with myself is, right, oh, I'm not acting because there's certain fears I've got. I'm not acting with some fears about you know, the divine truth, the big picture stuff, because I'm afraid that people will perceive this and people will perceive that and I don't want them to do that. So I need to deal with all that emotion. I need to get rid of that so that I do act. Right? So what I've decided this, this week, for example, is, no, I'm going to start taking control of this divine truth thing. <laughs> right? I'm tired of actually waiting for other people to get into a space of love to actually have a desire and I'm thinking, hang on a sec, why am I tired? It's because I'm actually expecting other people to do it so that I don't have to. I'm avoiding one of my own emotions. Right? I need to act. Once I act, whatever is emotion will come up for me. And I need to act. I need to look at the whole thing of things being available for free. I want, what I want, and what I've said to everyone involved in this process, I want every single DVD that's ever produced to be available for free. Not by donation, for free. Right. What that means is 
that nobody has to pay any money for a DVD. That's what I want. Now, how is that going to happen? What's go how it's going to happen is I'm going to provide them for free until I run out of money. And when I run out of money, then I'll stop providing them because I don't have the money to provide them. Does that make sense? And, any, and all those who appreciate them having for free may finish up donating some funds so that I can then provide them for free again. Does that make sense? But what's been happening instead is different and I need to change that because it's not harmonious with love in the end. It's not, and I've been afraid to act because of a lot of reasons. I want the different people involved to think about it and to feel about it and work through their emotions about it. But all that's unloving too. They don't have to deal with their emotions about it. They don't have to feel about it. They don't have to do anything like that. I need to act harmonious with love myself. Does that make sense? Can everyone with their hands up put their hands down? Thanks. Because I'm going to talk a little bit more on this subject. <laughs> a lot of times you don't realise when you've got your hand up while I'm speaking, you're actually projecting at me quite strongly. And that's something I'm also going to stop responding to in the future. Anyway, so what happens is that we, we're there often, what we're often doing is we're often refusing to act because of an emotion inside of ourselves. Right? That's the reason why we're refusing to act. And what I've started to look at inside of myself is, all right, I've got some emotion about. I don't want to... I've never been a person who's wanted to organise things. That's a big problem, considering that where I came from and I was organising a lot of things there. Does that make sense? So this is a big emotion in me. I need to work my way through. Why do I have this problem? Oh, because I want to have this nice idyllic life with Mary where I don't have to be responsible for anything, right? So this is another emotion. How are you, how are you ever going to change the world by having, a, having an emotion that you want to live in some place in the middle of Timbuktu and nobody ever sees you? It's going to be pretty hard, right? Because nothing, nothing, in the end, you're going to have to confront truth with everything around you at some point for, for the world to change. So I've got to look at that and I've got to examine what's going on inside of me that causes me to want to do that. And what causes it for me is my feelings about acting. I don't want to act in harmony with truth. I'm willing to talk and act in harmony with truth in my personal life, but I don't want to take actions without saying the words to people first. Why don't I want to? Because I'm afraid that they'll then think I'm arrogant, that, that I'll think, you know, they'll think that's unfair, that they think it's unjust, that half of you feel very offended and want to leave, and all those kind of things. And I've spent years trying to get to the point where people will actually listen to the divine truth. And I need to give all that up. Because in the end, if I give all of that up, now I'm acting more in harmony with divine truth and love. And as a result of that, more things are going to happen harmonious with truth and love. In other words, I'm bringing myself into harmony with divine law and because I'm in harmony with divine law, things will change much more rapidly than when I was compromising divine law. And that's what we don't appreciate inside of ourselves emotionally. We think we, think we can embellish the truth. We think that we can you know, talk some more words, talk some more words, talk some more words and things will change. Things are only going to change when we act. That's a basic, basic truth that we need to understand. My soul condition is only going to change when I act harmonious with love and truth and I decide I'm going to experience my own emotions. And I decide that I have such a longing for God that I long for God more than I long for anything else. Then things are going to change. Not while I'm waiting for you to change or I'm waiting for things to change outside of me. That's, things are not going to change then. It's all going to be based upon whether I act myself. So the reason why I wanted to bring all of this up is because it's such an important issue that I see going on. I've understood it before in a lot of different ways, but, but not understood it in myself, like in terms of feeling how much my refusal to act is just about avoiding emotion. And I've always had this in, this part, in the past, Oh, I've got to sit down first and have a talk with the person. Well, hang on a sec. Like, a person's just treated you unlovingly. Why do you have to sit down and have a talk with them? The only emotional reason why I can think of is that because you want them now to treat you lovingly. And you're unwilling to experience the emotion inside of yourself as to why they treated you unlovingly. And ironically, if you release that emotion, the next time you see them, they'll probably treat you lovingly. <laughs> 
Like acting is the most, one of the most powerful things you can do with your own progression. Does that make sense to everyone? If you choose to act in harmony with love and truth, you will always in the end trigger the emotions and you will no longer be making the choice to fear to stay in a place of fear. And this is the beauty of emotions, truth and actions. With actions, you will always end up exposing emotions and you will always finish up getting closer to truth if you act. The people who have been the most successful in this world, even with all of the universal programming that goes on here on this planet, the people who are the most successful on this planet are the people who choose to act. And you know the people who are the least successful? Are the people who choose to criticise the people who act. And isn't that a beautiful law in place? If I choose to criticise the people who act and not act myself, I am actually going to be in a worse place emotionally, physically, and spiritually and also ironically with regard to abundance and other things like that than if I choose to act harmoniously with love and truth I will always in the end come out with all of those things, abundance, love, you know, my physical body is going to change, my spirit body was going to change, my emotions are going to change, my soul is going to grow if I choose to act. If I choose to sit down and twiddle my thumbs and wait for everyone around me to act or criticise everyone around me for acting, all I'm doing is just further damaging myself and I'm not going to get anywhere with that. So what I would like to do is encourage you to start looking at this area of action in your life. To actually begin to take actions that you're afraid of and to feel the emotion of it as you take these actions. Ask yourself, is what I'm doing harmonious with love and truth? If it's not, then act even if you don't know the emotion you're avoiding. Because guaranteed when you act, you will soon find out the emotion you've been avoiding. Does that make sense to everyone? And if you do that, the power of that is that you're going to grow very much more rapidly. I've found whenever I've acted, I've grown a lot. Whenever I've stuck in this state of you know, just being afraid to act, that's when things have taken a long time. So I've been afraid to act in certain areas of my life, afraid to say the truth to people. Like I've still said the truth, but I've been afraid to say it and I'm afraid to act upon that truth. So I say the truth and then I sit down and wait for them to change. That's not loving. We need to say the truth but not expect people around us to change. I need to change. And the way that I can change is by say, not just saying the truth but acting in complete harmony with the truth that I'm saying. Then all of my emotional reasons will come up inside of me as to why I couldn't do that before. And as a result of that, I'll release lots of emotion that will get me closer to God. I've had times in my own life, right, where, where like I've been afraid to even enter a shopping centre. Now, Mary comes shopping with me now and she knows that I'm not very afraid anymore. But, but what I used to be was so afraid that I would sit out in the car and get somebody else to do my shopping for me. That's how afraid I was. Right? And then I decided, now hang on a sec, I need to act here. How do I bring up this fear? By acting. So what did I choose to do? Go to the shopping centre and sit in a shopping centre four hours twice a week and feel my emotions about why I was so uncomfortable with being there. And then I'd tr trigger these emotions by acting, by doing what I knew was harmonious. Is it harmonious? We'd love to go and get somebody else to do my shopping for me. Of course it's not, right? Even if I've got the money to pay them, I'm not looking after myself, I'm not taking care of myself, I'm not taking full responsibility for my life, so therefore it's not a loving act. I might have billions of dollars in the bank and if I'm still getting someone else to cook my meals for me, I am not being loving to myself. Or to them, uh, ironically. That's why many of you have come up and during the break and said, oh, can we get some food for you? I've said to you, no, because it's an unloving thing for me to ask of you to get food for me when I could do it myself. Does that make sense? That's an unloving act. So, so what I need to do is confront that by acting myself. I need to act 
upon what I know to be truth myself. And if, if you find if you do this, there'll be so much change in your life. You'll be, you won't be able to manage it initially. You'll feel like overwhelmed initially, right, with the changes that occur. But after a while, you get sort of very, very, very quickly, you'll become quite proud of yourself. Not in a negative way or an unloving way, but you'll feel like you have some self-worth now because you have the courage to act harmonious with your true beliefs. So I'm not telling you to act in disharmony with your beliefs. So if you don't believe that eating meat is wrong, then don't act. All right? Don't act. Feel the results of it in your body and in your life. But don't, don't act if you don't believe it. But if you know, and you know that it's an unloving act, then act upon that. Change your life now. And all the reasons why you wanted that meat in the first place are all going to get triggered. Right down to your mum, and by the way, these are the causal emotions, your mum and dad's judgment of you is one of the biggest causal emotions as to why we eat what we eat. Right? And, and then you'll have all of these different things happen as a result of your choice to act. Right? So why I wanted to discuss this process of action with you is one of the things I wanted to talk about myself in the future is, is I want to make sure in the future that instead of talking about things with you privately, I actually act harmonious with love and truth with you privately. Does that make sense? Now, acting harmonious with love and truth is going to also mean acting harmonious with love and truth of myself. Right? Not just of you, but of myself. You see, I can't compromise love of me to love you. That's an unloving act too. So I need to act harmonious with love and truth for, for in all situations. So that is going to mean some of you are going to be in a state where you go, wow, what's AJ doing now? It's like, like he never told me he was going to do that. Well, when you think back of it, how many times have I told you what my desires are? And you'll soon find out that I had told you many times generally. But even if I haven't, the fact that I'm acting has caused you to think that. And at least there's a change now because I could have talked all I wanted and not got any action at all. So what I'm trying to do myself is live in harmony with acting without having to speak any words. Acting harmonious with love and truth. Now sometimes the action with harmoni that's harmonious with love and truth is to speak. But you will feel when that's the case. A lot of the times we speak because we want to avoid the action. We want the other person to change so that I don't have to. And we need to stop doing that and get into this state where we actually begin to act harmonious with love and truth ourselves no matter what anybody else does with that. The irony when you do that, and when this is what I've found, it's things go so smoothly for you in a lot of different areas. It's amazing. All of these things that before were quite difficult to achieve, all of a sudden, bang, 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 they're all happening around you automatically because you're now acting in harmony with love and truth. You're allowing the emotions to come up as they come up and everything is now operating the way God intended it to operate in your soul. And the beauty, remember, of your soul is your soul loves truth. Your soul's emotions are all about truth. If you're not feeling your emotions, it's because you're telling yourself lies. So any of us who are stuck emotionally, it's because we are telling ourselves lies. Because the moment we tell ourselves the truth, things will change for us. God built your soul that way. Anyway, hopefully that's been... a. A bit of a <laughs> a bit of a spur on to action. <laughs> um, mind you, like you're allowed to not act too. Does that make sense? So all of, remember, with all of these talks, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just recommending to you what to do if you want to actually get closer to God and get closer to your own soul. So don't feel like you have to go home now and act. Allow yourself to feel through the emotional reasons why you haven't been. Let yourself feel about all of that stuff. So don't feel judged. I'm not judging you either. I know that there's been many times in my past where I have not acted because I've been afraid of truth. 
and I've not acted and I've even many times in the past, many years ago now, I compromised the truth so much that the truth became unrecognisable to me. Like, and I, I had all these intellectual arguments and reasons why I should compromise the truth. And ironically got told them from everyone around me. You know, the reason why you've got no friends is you tell the truth all the time. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. That's not the reason why you've got no friends. The reason why we've got no friends if we tell the truth all the time is because none of our friends like the truth in the first place. That's the reason why. If they like the truth, they would love us. That's the reason why you know, we haven't got any friends if that's the case from telling the truth. And we need to break all these, these uh, sort of patterns that we have in our lives and get back to the state where we're telling the truth, telling the And you notice here already that the, the love of truth is drawing you together. Do you notice that? Yeah. There are many people here who you would not have, you would have walked past in the street and possibly ignored, right? And never had a desire to know them or get to know them or feel them or any of those things. And now because of your love for truth, you find yourself being attracted to different ones. You notice that? And that's all because the truth is the thing that's going to set you free in the end. And that's why it's so important. Well, I'd like to thank you for your donations today as well. And uh, tomorrow, like I said, we're going to have a chat about how we're going to use those donations for a fir first hour or so. And uh, then after that, we're going to look at this, the desire part of your soul. Because it's such an important part of your soul, the desire. Because when you start experiencing the desire, that's when you're going to grab back the joy in your life. All right? So that's where a lot of your joy resides in. Our lack of exercising our desire causes a lack of joy. We love you guys. Catch you later.